Hi, hi, hi hello, hello, hi. Hi. So long story short, this is our hamster cage currently. It's a nice tank. And this is our hamster, Cloud. He's a pretty cute boy. However, it pains me to say that the tank we're using is a brilliant tank. Very thick, very sturdy, very lovely, but it's just under the minimum recommended in Europe, which a lot of hamster forums like to promote. So we decided to double it. So we've got this table here. That's hot. And this is twice the size of the tank that we've got in there. Now with any good cage, we need legs. Now I know what you're, th now I know what you're thinking, but keys, this cage has legs. Does it? No. This is how the tank will be made. These are the posts to which will hold up the wall. We want legs on this side. So, our initial plan is to place this cage on the floor, but of course we want to make sure we prevent scratching the surface. We will be putting these little feet. So we've created divots at every corner of the table and we use them as a marker in order to place the actual foot and then we use a screw in order to secure it safely. Believe it or not, screws do not put themselves in wood. So we're going to drill a little pilot hole first and then we're going to put the screws in. And now we're going to screw in the legs. Now that we've got the legs screwed in, we've got more legs. So the point of these two legs is to hold up the second floor. Yes, he's getting a second floor, which is a smaller white table. Because we want to make this extra exciting for Cloud, we decided to put another floor to this cage. And um, this will be the table that we're planning to install on top. Um, however, we need to balance this, and hence we have found two extra coffee table feet that we're going to use to um, balance out so it stays nice and strong and sturdy. However, one challenge that we're currently facing is the fact that these coffee table feet are slightly higher than the ones we actually have. So in order to solve this, we decided to use some stick-on felt in order to even out the height so that when we place this table, it is nice, safe and sturdy. So this is our overall structure, as you can tell it looks pretty decent. However, the next step before we go any further is to coat the base, potentially the legs and sides as well, in a sticky back plastic, also known as Fablon. So when he pees, it will stay safe and it also just looks generally nice and the same all round because at the moment we've got black, brown, white and you know, colours don't mix. Hi! So uh, we've got some sticky back plastic, or fablon as the posh kids like to call it. We're going to cut it to size and first we're going to layer the base of the black table. This is going to make it easier to clean because we only have to wipe it down and then we're going to do the same for the 10 of the legs and the white table. So, let's start.
Our next step is to attach these two legs onto the large table as such and for this we're going to use aquarium sealant because it's safe for pets. Once we've done this we're going to drill holes in four of the legs on the larger table so we can insert these makeshift pegs that we're going to use to slot the smaller table on and off making it portable for us. While we're waiting for the ceiling to dry, we're going to drill the holes in preparation for the pipe. The next step is to cut the wood to the appropriate sizes so we can make the edges and then the slots for the perspex to slide into. Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't explain anything, did I? You see, what I'm going to do is make slots around each side of the table. And in these slots, I'm going to put sheets of perspex, aka windows, so we can see inside the cage. Yeah, just... Play! Play... Uh, there we go. Now that we've designed the edgings, our next step is to cover them with sticky back plastic, also known as Fablon, um, just to make the design a bit better and also make it easier to clean in the long run. As you can see, we've stuck down all of the wood pieces, so now we have solid slots and edges. So we are now going to cut rectangles of wood and perspex to be the sides of the DIY cage.
as you can see, the bulk of the cage is pretty much done. Some of the sides you may notice are wood instead of perspex. The reason for this is because perspex is bloody expensive, so that's the temporary arrangement until we buy some more. I also took one piece out because we still have a bit of drilling to do. We're going to make a slot for our tubes to go in so our hamster can get up and down. And now that that's done, we have the semi-finished product. Terry's going to give it a little clean, just so it's usable and there's no plastic or residue left in there. And some of the bits of Fablon are sticking up, so we're going to glue that down with PVA as well. So this is the final product and as you can see we've decided to keep the wooden boards because we would like to have an opportunity to hook little things to them that way we can have a little rope for Cloud to play with or anything else that we find interesting and cute. So our original plan involved creating a spirally tube that connects the two floors together. However, after a lot of debating we decided that we would like to stick to this type of uh, design because um, not only was it going to be ridiculously expensive to achieve what we wanted, but the actual cage size doesn't really fit that type of design.